So, Arish, how comfortable are you with XML XSD concepts? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Okay, so this session I'm just trying to uh, walk through at a high level uh, what is an XST and XML concepts and uh, I'll try to give you some uh, steps to install the SOA suite which includes the OSP and maybe you can get started with the installation and <laughs> in your next session so once you're ready probably we'll get started with the demonstrations. Okay. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Can you just brief me the things that you are aware of OSB, Harish? Brief about OSB. Not OSB. OSB. I'm sorry, uh, on XML. On an XML. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it just in uh, extensible markup languages for uh, primarily to exchange data be between systems. Okay. Okay, so just to add uh, on top of whatever you have mentioned, so let's take, uh, I have an application, A1. So this guy has been implemented in Java. Now we'd like to communicate this A1 from A2. So even this game was implemented in Java. Are you comfortable with Java? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when these two applications are implemented in Java, how do we communicate? Let's take I have a class, maybe a purchase order class. So maybe in A2, I'll try to create an instance of purchase order class and I'll try to utilize the APIs of that class. So typically that's how we communicate. Now let's take, I have one more application called A3, which was implemented in non-Java. Okay, so how do I can communicate uh, to A3, either from A2 or A3 to A1? So that's why we introduced something called XML, which stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's basically a software, hardware, independent way to represent the data. So any tool or utility can able to understand this data. So that's the reason we prepare the data, whatever we need to communicate in terms of an XML, and we send it. So that A3 will understand, even A1 will also understand that data. So that's the basic intention of introducing an XML to communicate between two different systems which were implemented in two different text stacks. Okay. Now these are very basics that you've already heard about. This is a sample uh, for the XML. Any XML file uh, which could be .xml, .bpl, .vistl could be anything which is an XML related file. We'll start with this is the first statement, which which talks about this is an XML, and it would be having some set of tags we call specifically as elements. Okay, so I collected most of these slides from a uh, couple of online uh, portals, most from w3schools.com. So these will cover at a high level to give you a quick understanding about an XML. You can also uh, go through uh, online to explore more, but if you find any difficulty, any issues, things that you do not understand, please put them in a notepad, so I'll, I should be able to talk about them. Okay. okay, so XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's markup language much like your HTML. So XML was designed to carry the data, not to display the data. Where HTML was designed to display the data on a page, so that's the basic difference between these two text stacks. And XML tags are not predefined. You must define your own tags. So it's author's responsibility to define these tags. So what element, what data this tag can uh, hold, all those details, the author has to define them. Few differences, so that we already discussed, XML is not a replacement for your HTML. So these are defined with two different goals. XML was designed to transport, store with the focus of what data it was. 
and HTML was designed to display the data with the focus on how that data should look on a page. And these are invented by the author of the XML document. So that's why uh, these are not predefined. We, we need to de define them. And whereas in HTML is talking about the elements like paragraph, headers, these are all predefined. And XML follows a tree structure. Okay, so it's like you would be having a root element, children, subchildrens, and so forth. And these XML tags are case sensitive. So it means uh, you're pretty much aware of case sensitive, right? element should be case sensitive. It should, have, it should be having a close tag and it should be properly nested. It means I need to close this object before I'll be closing the child element. And it should have a root element and only one root element is allowed. And it can accommodate even attributes. But the value of those attributes must be in quotes. Either the single or double quotes. Okay. Okay, so there is an example. Uh, I have an element called message whose value is if salary less than 1000 then. This is the value. Now this guy is talking about in case the value needs these special symbols, you need to replace with these characters. So for example, this ambassador LT uh, semicolon means less than. <coughs> and this is a comment. And what is an element? An element is everything from including element start tag to including elements end tag. In between start and end tags, you can have a couple of other elements. You can have a text, attributes, or a mix of all these flavors. For example, bookstore is an element which started here and ended here. In between them, I can have a couple of more uh, elements like book, which is a children, title, which is a sub-children. So even these are elements and even the bookstore is also an element. And how do you define an empty element? Uh, what is this? I think somebody was mistaken. Okay. Okay, so this is how you need to define an empty element. Either you can close directly here or you can even close. Let me put the same element in. Yeah. And there are some naming rules uh, when you're creating these elements. Uh, typically, whatever the rules that you give for a variables, whether in Java, C, any programming language, all those rules will also be applicable for your XML element names saying uh, it can contain the letters, numbers, other characters. It cannot start with a number or a punctuation character. It cannot contain even spaces. In addition to them, it also saying you cannot have these uh, preserved words as a prefix. And XML elements are extensible. The reason you have a couple of elements here in future you can include a couple of more elements that's why you can say this is an extensible for example heading got added here and the attributes so let's say file is your element and this is the value of your element and this is a type is an attribute whose value is this case okay? and is also mentioning the value could be either in double quotes or single quotes okay. now if you value of attribute itself contains these symbols. How do you represent them? Pretty much similar what we discussed earlier. You need to replace with the special characters. And now he's talking about elements versus attributes. Now he has an element called person which has an attribute and with some other child elements. Now he replaced the attribute with an element again. Now what is the recommended approach? Try to avoid attributes as much as possible replace them as an elements. It's very simple because uh, when it is an attribute, I cannot extend this further. But when it is an element, I can extend this further. I can create a couple of child elements, couple of attributes. Okay, So that's the reason creating elements is more, I mean, recommendable. So for example, 
he has the bunch of data which was represented in terms of an elements. And the same thing he represented in terms of uh, one element and other attributes. Both are valid, but this is more recommended. Okay. And namespace. Are you uh, familiar with the namespace, Harish? Sure. Okay. So this lady is trying to talk about he got a name conflict since he has uh, that table with some set of elements. He has another XML document with the same table element but he is representing a furniture information here. Now when he's trying to combine both the XML documents, he got the name conflict. So to resolve this, he is giving a namespace for every uh, table so that even, your, even though your element name is same, so but this guy is uh, talking about a different uh, functionality. Okay, so typically uh, if we compare it is pretty much similar to your Java package even though I have a class, same class, same content in two different packages. Yeah. For the JVM it's entirely different because it's identify or it will load that class uh, from that package. Right. right. Okay. Now here he's just talking about I don't want to represent this namespace every time when, I, when I'm uh, declaring this table. So mm -hmm. for a cleaner approach I can simply define this namespace to the parent of this element so that I don't need to repeat every time. So that's what he's doing in this slide. Just above the table he, de he declared what is h colon means, uh, f prefix means and wherever he's using those tables he'll use with that prefix. Okay. And now I have one more uh, question here. So for example width is an element which is an al a numeric value. But here width is taking some characters. So how do I restrict this element should take only a numbers, not a character. That's where we introduce something called a validator. So we have two flavors of validators. One is DTD document type definition, another one is XST, XML schema definition. Now we will not be using DTD uh, anymore due to following reasons uh, of the benefits of your XST. So XST schemas are also written in XML, so you'll get all the benefits of XML. These are extensible, they supports data types, they supports even the namespaces. So that's the reason we, not, we will not be using a DTD. Yeah. Okay. So for an example, so you can define the element this way. So this is an XML document. For this guy, he's representing an XST. Note, complex type, we'll, I'll talk about complex type, all these things, uh, maybe in the coming slides. Okay, so I have an element called two and I am capable of defining what is the data type of this element so that it should be only a number or it should be uh, a character value. So any questions Harish? No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So I'll try to uh, wind it up here for today.